In this recording, we're going to discuss the cardiac cycle. Everybody's been to the doctor and had the doctor listen to their heartbeat. Then you take that nice stethoscope, which is always really cold, and they put it on your chest and they listen for your heartbeat. We call this auscultation or to oscillate your heart. We're listening for those heart sounds. Now, you already know because you can maybe hear or at very least feel your own heartbeat in your chest. You know that we get two sounds. We get a lub and we get a dub. Okay? Now, under normal conditions, blood flowing through the open valves themselves is relatively quiet. So the sounds that we hear are really only created when the valves close. Now, it's not quite so much like a slamming door. Okay? It's more from vibrations created within the ventricles and the blood vessel walls um, as the blood was moving and now we've closed the valves and everybody just kind of gives off a little bit of vibration. The lub dubs themselves, we call them S1 and S2. S1, our lub, is heard when your AV valves close. S2, your dub, is heard when the semilunar valves close. S1 sound, or your lub, is typically a little longer and louder than your S2. Now, if you can think back to the last time you went to the doctor and they put that cold stethoscope on your chest, you may have noticed that they didn't just put it in one place, listen real quick, and call it a day. They did move it around a little bit. And this picture just shows you exactly where they should have been placing the microscope. We've got some detailed um, descriptions of the locations and then the sounds themselves that they're listening for. This picture is really just more for an FYI, but I do think it's interesting that your AV valves are way up here and yet they're placing this stethoscope way down here to hear those valve sounds. I just think that's interesting. Now, cardiac cycle itself. We have two words that we're going to hear over and over and over as we talk about the cardiac cycle. And those words are diastole and systole. So diastole is relaxation and systole is contraction. Okay. Now both your atria and your ventricles will relax and both your atria and your ventricles will contract. However, if we just throw around the word diastole, if we just throw around the word systole, if we are not super specific, we are talking about ventricular diastole and ventricular systole. Okay? And again, unless we are super specific and say atrial diastole. Okay? If we just say the word diastole, we're talking about ventricular diastole. Same thing with systole. If we're not super specific, if we just throw around the word systole, we're talking about ventricular systole. All the good stuff happens in the ventricles. Now, we also need to keep in mind the pressures within the right and left sides of the heart. The right side of the heart has a much lower pressure than the left side. Um, the right side of your heart, remember your right atrium and ventricle are moving the blood out towards your pulmonary circuit to your lungs, which are right next door. So you really don't need a very high pressure to push that blood next door to the uh, lungs. So 24 over 8 is about the uh, normal pressure of the right side of your heart. Left side of your heart is a little bit different. Remember, the left side of your heart, your left atrium and ventricle, are getting ready to pump blood out through your aorta to your entire body, your systemic circuit. It takes a lot more force to get the blood to go um, to your entire body versus just your lungs next door. So this pressure is going to be quite a bit higher. We're going to get up to about 120 over 80 instead. And you might notice um, that number being very familiar to you as what the, the doctors always want your blood pressure to be around. We, we tend to think of a 120 over an 80 as a very, very nice blood pressure. All right, here we go. We're jumping in. We're not going to panic. Stop panicking, okay? I know this picture looks very overwhelming, and we're just going to take one little piece at a time. It's going to be okay. When we talk about the cardiac cycle, we start with mid to late ventricular diastole, which sounds kind of weird that we're starting mid to late anything. Why aren't we starting at the beginning? But this is just how we, how we do it, y'all. Ventricular diastole. What was diastole? Diastole was relaxation. Okay, so your ventricles are relaxing. What are they doing while they're relaxing? They are filling up with blood. Ooh, so ventricular filling. We're going to put the blood in the ventricles. All right, so to put the blood in the ventricles, first it has to get to the atria. So blood enters the atria under low pressure. OK, 
okay? If we are talking about the right atrium specifically, that blood comes from your superior and inferior vena cava, as well as your coronary sinus. Don't forget about your coronary circulation. We have to feed the heart as well. If we are talking about the left side of the heart, the left atrium, the blood is coming through the pulmonary veins from the lungs themselves. We've got deoxygenated blood on one side and oxygenated blood on the other side. As blood enters the atria from all of these vessels, we are going to open up those AV valves, both the tricuspid and the bicuspid. Okay. What does that allow us to do? That allows us to move the blood from the atria and drop it down into the ventricles. Remember, we're doing ventricular filling, so that should make sense. Now, if our AV valves are open, we're going to want to close our semilunar valves. Okay, no point in opening all of the valves, then the blood just goes all over the place, and we're not quite ready to do that yet. So the semilunar valves are going to close, so the blood stays in the ventricles for a little bit. Now, the pressure in the left ventricle is still fairly low, only about 70 to 80 millimeters of mercury. Remember, we have to get up to 120-ish millimeters of mercury, so we're not quite at our normal ventricular pressure yet. Okay? We gotta work towards that. So recap, what have we done? Blood has entered the atria, we've opened the AV valves, and it has gone down into the ventricles, okay? Then we're gonna move on to atrial systole. What was systole? It was contraction. So the SA node is gonna fire. We're gonna spread that nerve impulse. We're gonna do atrial depolarization. We're gonna get the atria to contract. When you have atrial contraction, any blood that was left over in the atria gets pushed down into the ventricles. So we have fully filled all of our ventricles now. There is a particular volume that we like to see in the ventricles, the volume of blood in each ventricle. We give it a fancy name because why not? We call this your end diastolic volume, your EDV. This should be approximately 120 milliliters. You are going to want to write down that number, highlight it, circle it, put a star next to it, make yourself a flashcard, do something, okay? This number is gonna come up again, okay? So we have done ventricular filling, okay? We have now contracted our atria to push any remaining blood down into the ventricles. What do you think comes next? We're probably going to do something with your ventricles. We're going to have ventricular systole. We're going to contract. So we just mentioned that our SA node fired. We spread the signal throughout the atria. We did atrial polarization and we even did atrial contraction. In the meantime, the signal has spread to the AV node. Now the AV node fires. We're going to spread that signal through your AV bundle, down your bundle branches, through your Purkinje fibers. We're going to uh, have ventricular depolarization, which you already know leads to ventricular contraction. We're going to squeeze our ventricles. Now, when all of this happens, your AV valves are going to need to shut, which is how we get our lub sound. Look, y'all, we got a lub. It took like three slides, but we finally got to the lump. Okay. Why are we slamming our AV valve shut? Because we don't want backflow. We don't need blood to go back from the ventricle back up into the atria that does us no good. How do we prevent that? We have to close these valves, which is what we've done right here. We've closed these valves, the AV valves. Okay. Now, this is also interesting. Make yourself a little note of this. Once your AV valve shut, your semilunar valves haven't quite opened yet. Okay, and this is a quote unquote for this brief moment, right? So this doesn't last very long, but for a brief moment in time, all four valves are closed at the same time. So blood isn't moving anywhere, it's kind of trapped. We call this isovolumetric contraction. Okay, we know what contraction means, right? We're squeezing. We're trying to pump. Well, what does isovolumetric mean? Iso means the same, and volume refers to how much blood is in the ventricles. So we're keeping the volume of the blood the same. We're not letting in any more blood. We like our 120 milliliters, but we are still contracting, so we're still squeezing. What does that get us? 
that it helps us increase our pressure. So the pressure in the left ventricle finally gets up to that 120 millimeters of mercury that we were looking for. Why do we need to do that? Because remember, your left ventricle is pumping blood out through your aorta to your entire body. That's kind of hard to do. It's a big old vessel. You've got to overcome gravity. You've got to make sure you pump it hard enough to get it to go through your arch and then your descending aorta and through the rest of the, the vessels themselves. So we need to build up that pressure. This isovolumetric contraction lets us do that. Okay. So once we hit our pressure that we were looking for, our semilunar valves then open up, okay? Your AV valves are still gonna stay closed, but your semilunar valves are gonna open up and blood is going to get pumped through both your pulmonary trunk and your aorta, okay? So both of those vessels. Now, blood, is going to shoot through your ventricles like we just said, right? We just did contraction. So the blood's going to be ejected from the ventricles. The amount of blood that leaves your ventricles is not 120 milliliters of blood, which is kind of mind blowing. It's only about 70 milliliters of blood. We call this your stroke volume. Again, this is another number that you're gonna want to make a flashcard or something for, okay? This, this volume, this stroke volume, this 70 milliliters is gonna come up again over and over and over. From the right ventricle, blood's gonna move through the pulmonary trunk. From the left ventricle, the blood's gonna move through the aorta. We already know that. We're comfortable with our blood flow at this point. But because we didn't pump out all 120 milliliters, we have another value that we can calculate. It's called your ejection fraction. And it's basically the percent of blood that you did pump out, okay? How do we calculate that? It should be your stroke volume divided by the total volume amount, which was your end diastolic. Okay. If you take your 70 milliliters over your end diastolic, which should have been 120 milliliters, okay, 70 over 120 should give you, okay, and 70 over 120 um, is going to give you about 58 percent, okay, 58.3 ish percent. It's not a nice round number, um, but okay, these volumes can change a little bit. There is a little bit of a normal range but your ejection fraction on average should be, okay, anywhere between 50 to 65%, okay? So approximately, just for a nice round number, approximately 60% of the blood in your ventricles gets pumped out with every heartbeat, okay? Only 60%, so we do have blood left over. That blood is your in systolic volume. It should be around 50 milliliters, okay? Again, you are going to want to know all of these volumes. You're going to need to be able to use these volumes, okay? Do a little bit of math to answer future questions, okay? Now, we're almost done, okay? Our ventricles have been working really hard. They just contracted. They just pumped a bunch of blood out to our body. Now they get to relax. So early ventricular diastole, okay. we can refer to this as isovolumetric relaxation. Okay, so after we pump blood out of the ventricles, the semilunar valves are going to close because we want the blood to go out. We don't want it to come back. This is finally, 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 where we get our dub sound. The semilunar valves are going to close. I know it took us forever to get to the dub, y'all, but we're here, okay? Once again, very, very briefly, all four heart valves are closed. This time, we call it isovolumetric relaxation. We're not building up pressure anymore. For a very split second, we are getting to relax and not change volume, okay? 
and then we go back to the beginning. Okay, those AV valves are gonna open up, blood's gonna start coming into your atria under low pressure. We open up those AV valves, it goes down into your ventricles, it just starts all over again. Okay. Now, one thing that I hadn't mentioned quite yet, let me find, go back to, okay, so the very beginning. Um, here we go. So, we term this step ventricular systole. Well, what's happening at the same time? We've got atrial diastole. Okay, ventricular systole, atrial diastole. Ventricular diastole, atrial systole. Don't forget that even if we're talking about one set of chambers specifically, the other set of chambers is also doing something. Okay, so if our ventricles are relaxing, our atria have to get ready to contract and vice versa. Okay, so this also helps you um, with remembering your terminology of, and remembering, oh, all four chambers are doing something. They don't just take turns. It's not one, two, three, four. Okay, it's atria doing something and ventricles doing something. Okay, so just don't forget that if we call this early ventricular diastole, what else is going on? Oh, it's also atrial systole time. Okay, just kind of keep that in the back of your mind as well. Um, so we have completed a cardiac cycle. I'm very proud of you. You stuck it out. I am. Um, one more thing about the heart sounds themselves. Sometimes um, your doctor will hear an abnormal heart sound from doing the auscultations. Um, some of the more common ones, we call them heart murmurs. We have three that are um, somewhat common. Incompetent valves, stenotic valves, and mitral valve prolapses. Okay. Um, if you suffer from an incompetent valve, you are going to have backflow because your valve does not close properly. You get a swishing sound. Um, it kind of sounds like a washing machine. Okay. So if you uh, can imagine the swishing of your washing machine as it's washing your clothes, that's kind of what that sounds like. A stenotic valve, anytime you have a stenosis of anything, you have narrowed something. In this case, you have narrowed your valve, okay? Which means your blood can't flow through like it should. So this opening, so in our example here, this opening is not as large as it should be. Um, this will decrease your ejection fraction, so you're not able to pump as much blood through as you normally would. It also reduces something called cardiac output, which we haven't actually mentioned cardiac output quite yet. That's our next topic. But cardiac output is literally just how much um, blood you pump out of your heart every minute. And so if your ejection fraction goes down, your cardiac output goes down as well. This makes more of a high pitch sound. Um, as blood is trying to flow through the extra skinny vessel, or the valve, excuse me. And then we have mitral valve prolapse. Um, your papillary muscles are malfunctioning or your chordae tendinae um, are abnormal or malfunctioning in some way. So this backflow occurs, uh, this tends, if we're talking about just your mitral valve, this um, specifically happens on the left side of your heart. So we're going to have blood moving from your left ventricle back into your left atrium, okay? What is that going to affect? Well, that's also going to affect your cardiac output, okay? We're going to, um, an ear ejection fraction, we're going to not be pumping out quite as much blood to your body as we would normally like to.